Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of MMOFTW here on MMORPG.com. I'm your host, Bill Murphy, and this is the week that was in MMO News. Uh, not a lot going on. Uh, I'm kidding. There's always something going on in this industry, right? So let's start off with kind of the big but expected news from Activision Blizzard, which is to say that Hearthstone and Destiny both accounted for over $850 million of income for the company in 2014. Destiny is a game that, even here, hasn't been getting very, very great critical reviews, and yet people can't stop seem, can't seem to stop playing it, or talking about it, or buying it. Um, and not to mention Hearthstone itself, a free-to-play card game on the PC and the iPad, and now the Android uh, devices. <laughs> that's a free-to-play card game that's helping pull in $850 million in 2014. That's bigger than World of Warcraft was able to do this year. The game is huge, and it's opening across the world, so, well, let's just say it's probably not going anywhere for some time. There's a whole new expansion, uh, rumor is, even on the way as we speak. So, yeah, anybody that thinks that card games and first-person shooters are dying is probably in the wrong camp. Um, doesn't doesn't have anything to do with MMOs, necessarily, because we're, we're talking about two games that are limited in their MMO scope, but Destiny itself, I, we still categorize it as an MMO, even though it's you're, you're kind of limited to how many people you're playing with at a current time. It's a lot like Guild Wars 1, which we also consider an MMO on the site, um, and we're interested to see what the, the sequel to Destiny, which has been announced, but nothing has actually come up about it. Um, it, it really involves once all the expansion DLC content for Destiny 1 is done, so you know, um, if we're lucky, maybe we'll, we'll get the sequel on the PC too, and then some of our readers will actually care about it. Next up is some Guild Wars 2 news. The, the hype train and PR train is going strong now that Heart of Thorns, the first official expansion, has been announced. Uh, this week, Guild Wars 2 and ArenaNet partnered up with IGN and their own site at guildwars2.com to release a lot of information about the Mastery system, which will be the sort of new endgame progression system from 80 and beyond for all future expansions. Um, they talk a lot about, about how the mastery system is inspired by Zelda games where maybe you'll visit a puzzle or an area in a Zelda game and you won't you'll be like I, I I know I should be able to get there but I can't quite do it so what happens then is you'll keep playing the game and you'll unlock some sort of skill or ability or item that will allow you to go back to that place in time where you knew you could move but you couldn't quite get there and it'll let you that now be able to get to that area um, they have something like you'll be able to jump on mushrooms that kind of like spring you up, you'll have gliders, those are just two examples of some of the things you'll be getting the ability to use with the mastery system. Um, not a whole lot of very specific detail was given, but it gave us a better overall picture than last week's announcement of the expansion. So uh, keep your eyes peeled because I have a feeling that there's going to be quite a bit of information about of Heart of Thorns every week or every couple weeks from now until the expansion actually launches, who knows when, but hopefully this year. And in Crowfall news, that's right, they can't go a week without some Crowfall news because these guys are really setting up their uh, their hype train as they get down to their countdown on their official website. Anyway, in Crowfall news, they talk about the funding vision, which is that they've put in a lot of their own money, they've already got some investor dollars, but they're probably going to be taking donations and some sort of crowdfunding campaign as well to avoid having to take huge investment dollars uh, from large publishers or corporations. They want the game to to remain in the player's hands first and foremost, and they want to be able to keep the sort of uh, transparency and visibility they've had so far. Uh, Todd and Gordon have both been with AAA studios before, and they've also both been with independent studios before, and this time they want to keep things independent, and by the nature of MMOs, they want to keep things in the player's hands and have them uh, invested in the project as they go along. So chances are that countdown timer we're seeing, that's going to wrap up, and when it, when it finally hits zero, it's going to be something about crowdfunding. I think we all expect that, but hopefully there's a little bit more to it than that. We get some gameplay videos and a whole bunch of other cool stuff when that countdown timer hits zero. Um, and some rather really big news uh, kind of shocked a lot of people this week. SOE has been sold off by its parent company, Sony, and now they are Daybreak Game Company. That's right. By Columbus Nova, uh, this huge investment firm that buys things up and then kind of 
runs them for profit. Uh, they bought so they bought SOE and they are now Daybreak Games Company. Everything in the short term is remaining as is. Nobody's changing jobs. Nobody's losing jobs. Smet is still president. Uh, Dave Georgeson's still the creative director and and sort of the lead man on the big property EverQuest. Um, everything else is staying the same. Station Cash is going to stay the same. Your station account is going to stay the same. The only thing that might change is the actual branding of those. Um, but really, I think what we're all going to be watching is is what comes next from uh, SOE or now Daybreak Game Company. Because before they were all stuck on Sony consoles only, and they weren't able to do things on mobile devices as freely. Now that they are their own company, and Columbus Nova will have, I'm assuming, some sort of uh, you know leadership uh, goals for them as well, we might be seeing some of the SOE, formerly SOE games, move on over to the Xbox One, maybe. Uh, we might see some mobile apps and things like that come out, maybe some sort of uh, EverQuest card game will hit the uh, hit the iPad. I wouldn't be too surprised, to be perfectly honest. So keep your eyes peeled on Daybreak Game Company, especially it'll be nice when we finally know what their logo looks like instead of the left shark with whatever else is going on in the background of the joking mock-up they made. Uh, head on over to the Daybreak Game Company Twitter account, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And last but not least, uh, Neverwinter, in its next module, has announced that they have a brand new class coming. It's called the Oathbound Paladin, and fans of the uh, D&D campaign and D&D modules will now will actually know what the Oathbound Paladin is. Um, it's a subject of a new design blog on the Neverwinter page. Um, and, and really, well, here, I'll just kind of read to you what the Oathbound Paladin is all about. Um, the Oath of Protection is a particular path, and it, uh, you, it'll increase your healing by 100%. will give the recipient 5 stats increase for 8 seconds. Oath of Devotion generates 500 more threat and 10% less damage. So uh, you're getting the idea here that an Oathbound Paladin can go one of two ways, similar to Paladin in other games. They are a bit of a tank and they are also a bit of a healer. So you can be this melee-based healing class, again, like another game we might know, or you could be a melee-based healer, like another game we either know. I, I can say that Neverwinter has needed another healing class, and all games need another tank as well, so this is pretty cool that it's coming in with the Elemental Evil module later this year, um, and we'll, we'll have our eyes on it. I think it'll be available in the Xbox One version as well when it launches, so all the content that is currently on the PC version will also be with the Xbox um, when that one launches. We, Speaking of the Xbox One version, that is currently in closed beta, and we should have some beta keys to give away for you all in the not-too-distant not future, so keep your eyes peeled to the site uh, as well. And that'll do it for this week, folks. I think I've rambled on enough. We're, enough. We're here uh, about eight minutes here. Um, if there's anything you didn't hear in this brief little podcast, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook at MMORPGcom. You can also find us on Google Plus at MMORPGcom official. That's all one word, MMORPGcom official. If you want to add us by email address, it's simply YouTube at MMORPG.com. Thanks as always. I'm Bill Murphy. You can follow me on Twitter at TheBillMurphy. And as always, don't let a bad pug get you down. <laughs>